Hi, I should be doing this right. I should be live. Cool. Oh, let me go grab. Various things I need to grab here. All right, don't mind me. I'm just putting a message out real quick to folks. I don't have a set time for doing this yet, so maybe people don't know I'm live yet. Coo, 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 coo. Uh, there's a few things I want to do tonight. The... I can just go there. <laughs> the few things I want to do tonight, uh, the main thing is I'm going to reassemble the Omega that I took apart uh, last week. I'm going to get the parts back in this tray here. Here's the old mainspring. I won't be using this today. But if something should happen in the new one, it's nice to have one handy. Flopping around there. Uh, yeah, so I've got these little containers here. These have all the parts. Aside from the dial, the hands, and a brass washer. Everything else on this movement has been cleaned. So it should be... Good for reassembly. I also have the case, obviously. Uh, which for now I will just tuck in a drawer. If I get real fancy, I might uh, try to troubleshoot this watch. This is a Seiko chronograph. Um, when you wind it up, the chronograph works. You can see there. Resets back to zero. Beautiful. Uh, but the hands, the hands don't move. And I think I know what that is. We got like a 99% idea of what that is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get all these parts back into the tray here. Um, and we'll go from there. I also have to be careful because these baskets, uh, parts can get a little wandery. <laughs> this will be my first thing, and this will kind of get me warmed up in tune with my tweezers and all that. But yeah, if I do get around to working on that Seiko, I will uh, I'll have to get out the staking set. And it should be a fun time. These parts are looking awesome so far.
This also gives time. Uh, <laughs> this also gives people. Excuse me. This also gives people some time to file in, as it were. Show up. Yeah, look how. Wow. Nice and shiny. There are some scratches. It's not for me. I'm using brass tweezers. There is our pallet fork. Now the one thing I do not have at home here is epilom, epilame, epilom, however you want to say that. So I do not have, oh, wow. Shiny. <laughs> I do not have a way to coat the escape wheel, the pallet fork. Um, so I won't be doing any work there. I do have that at, at the shop, so I'll do it there. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of hard to pick up on, on the camera, but there is some rainbow shine there. That's what you like to see. A bridge that the rotor goes on. Double checking. Make sure I get all the parts out. Oh, yeah. This is a little brass basket here with some steel mesh. And underneath that lip, I've had parts in there before. So I always have to give just a quick inspection to make sure. Again, I'll know more once I get it all put together here. And there's another piece just floating in the corner there. I believe that's one of the movement tabs. We'll put that up here. recall having that issue before with the uh, with these baskets here <laughs> with the parts coming out of the little components here component the compartments okay there's the air spring Sliding pinion, winding crown, winding crown, is that even the right I get some of the names jumbled up quite frequently. I know what the parts are, so I don't, <laughs> it's a visual thing, so I visually know what they are, so it usually works out all right for me. Like a little fiber on that one. Weird. I 
our media wheel, there's our hour wheel. Setting lever, setting lever, spring, get the yoke. And here's another one. This looks like it's empty. Uh, which one is it? Right there. There's two screws right there. And they like to blend in. Huh, the stem stayed off color there. We'll hit that with a piece of peg wood. Main spring barrel, lid, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to go into that one still, there's still some more gunk in there, weird. Okay, so that should be all my parts. I didn't even use all the trays here. That's on me. Uh, give me a moment here again. Okay. Uh, yeah. This, I, yeah, I'm gonna start with this, actually. I might have to grab, lock that all in so those parts can't go anywhere. <laughs> Let me get this moved over here. It has been a weekend. It has been a master's weekend. Wow, what is that? 
Just went through the cleaner with everything else. Let me... Wow. Get the Dawn dish soap. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'll have to get this down to spotless before I can proceed. I don't have a Q-tip in here. I might have to go grab one real quick. Um... We'll stick with this pegwood for now with sharpening it and everything. You know that, how far that gets me? Uh, here, it might just be if I just do this. There we go. You guys still see us? Yeah, oh yeah. Look at all that, wow. This way. I just want to know what that is. Weird, and there's still stuff down in the... Right down in the corners there. I might have to go grab, yeah. Uh, some rubbing alcohol might work really well. It's also on the... Weird. That's a good sound, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, let me go grab at least uh, some rubbing alcohol here. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get some.
There we go. Got some rubbing alcohol in the glass here. Got a Q-tip. Uh, they do make actual, like, watchmakers Q-tips, like a cleaning kind of thing. And it's like a little tiny piece. It's like a little miniature Q-tip almost. Uh, I'm going to do this over here, actually. If I don't have to dump a bunch of rubbing alcohol on my bench here. This is also my first time seeing these pieces out of the cleaner here. Let that sit a bit. Yeah, it's been an interesting couple of days. Got it. My buddy's birthday the other day. Uh, headed over to meet up at a restaurant after work. And I'm pulling into this restaurant. My engine shuts off. <laughs> That was a weird experience. Okay, let me get a look at this here. Oh, there's still a spot of something in there. Hmm. What that is, uh, if you're wondering how that bottom isn't getting cleaned up, there's a there's a channel. I guess rather there's a, a the center of the wall sticks out, and this is where all the friction is. And there's kind of like a recess above and below it. Wow. Weird. Uh, so we're going to put some braking grease on that wall. And then I guess excess can kind of shoot out the sides or something. I, I, I personally don't know exactly why, but I think that is what it is. Okay. Another Dunkaroo with some rubbing alcohol there. It's going to be about as good as I can get that right now. So. All 
Oops. Okay. I like using this wider side. I don't know why, but I do. There's our... Excuse me. Our main plate. Uh, I'm just making sure that what I'm seeing is spots in the middle and not stuff left behind there. So yeah, we get my car. I was like, hey, now it's your birthday. I'm out in the parking lot. Can you help me move my car into a parking space? Um, couldn't get fired back up, but I was like, Go eat, we'll deal with this after. I've got, you know, I've got nothing but time after this. Go back out, fires right up after we eat. Go buy some stuff, like some fluid or whatever. Top it off. He follows me home, and of course it shuts off again on the drive home. Get somebody to help us jump it. And, uh, fires right up again. Spent a few hours today with one of my buddies. And I think we narrowed down what the issue could be. Okay. What I need to do now... This barrel sits in here like this. Does not fit in here. This way. Okay. I don't have a diagram in front of me. I don't have things written down. This goes in like this. All right. That's all I need to know there. So now I can take New mainspring. Shout outs again to my buddies. <laughs> Even wrote, hey guys. <laughs> One of those deals where it's like, uh, it's our buddies that are, you know, they could have driven this to us, but we bought it on their eBay page. They're filling out the order and they're like, wait a second, we know these guys. Cool, and I'll just save that card for later. Heck yeah. It's gonna be a six configuration, so it's gonna go in like that. Okay. I'm gonna leave that sealed for now. And this will be the thinnest <laughs> um, oiler that I've done this job with so we'll see how this works out now, when you buy an oiler they have different widths on the, the spatula end
And this is how I do this. Okay. I've seen people talk about this a few different ways. Um, some people will just put dots. So this is breaking grease here. And some people will just put a couple dots on the outside. And some people spread it out. I like to spread it out. Uh, it's going to get spread out anyway. So this is like sticky grease. So it's, it's called breaking grease. This is actually what grips the outside of the mainspring and gives it something to push off of, as it were. We'll get some on there. And again, I might be renewing this anyway if I get a different barrel for it, but let's see what we can do here. As you can see, this stuff is sticky and just <laughs> not an oil. It is a, a, a grease. Put too little on and it won't give the proper friction. Uh, so your amplitude will drop. Like trying to push... Uh, push something heavy, but the floor is slippery, or like you're on ice or something. Just not gonna work. Also, I'm cleaning my oiler again, don't worry. <laughs> I didn't just wipe it with my finger just to put it back in the grease. Whoop. And this is like the thinnest oiler I've used for work like this. I'm usually using like a really, really wide one, a green one. And um, with it pounded flat and smoothed out and everything. And it works really well. It gives you a nice surface to be able to spread this with. Yes, I've seen people do dots. I've seen people spread it out some. As long as I'm not globbing it all over the place and getting it on like the bottom of the barrel or not where it's supposed to be. 
And if it gives me a result, then uh, hey, it works. And of course, once you wind the, the mainspring up a few times, that helps shift the grease around too, so it doesn't have to be completely perfect in here, but... Helps the breaking process. Okay. I'm going to call that good for demonstration purposes of the video. Of the stream here. Didn't even introduce myself at the start of the stream. <laughs> uh, yep, I'm Peter. I uh, I fix watches. I'm about ninety nine percent self taught. Uh, excuse me. I've watched videos on stuff. Got a couple books. Took my first class the other day. I've got another one tomorrow, actually. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I don't have any, like, formal school training or anything like that. Okay, this is either going to work... So, usually with these, uh, there's an amount sticking out. I'm going to do something dumb. So this, this in that, is this here, wound up into a tiny little circle. Okay. Oh, my mom, I still on camera? Good. Okay. There we go. There it is installed. Uh, so basically, now that grease around the edge will act as a grip. It is a grease, so it should slide, but it also grips it. Unfortunately, I don't have my nice little bench block with the holes in it so I can't anchor this on anything well no, I'll just try to do it holding it Again, I should point out that I will be redoing this. Um, most likely getting a new barrel, so I don't expect this to be the final iteration of this. Uh, here, what if I take this? I want people jumping down my throat saying, hey, you're doing this wrong. Uh, for entertainment purposes only. Need that just to get a little bit wider there. Actually, if I turn it a little bit more. Oh, 
Come on. Oh. Oh boy. Now I'm definitely going to be redoing this. Wow. Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. All I wanted to do was move that over just a little bit like that. Now it's perfectly in. Goodness me. Okay. Grab my lid here. Master's Week. Uh, if you watch golf, that's the Master's green strap. I've waited like six months to wear. Okay. That is an assembled barrel. Wraps right in. Cool, perfect. I've installed one part. <laughs> All right, uh, where is this? Down just a hair there. You know, one of these days I'm actually gonna, I've got, I, I, I own a bit of music, um, like licensed music. I own the licenses too, I should say. I just gotta I just gotta get a playlist together and just set that up. Get that going one of these days. Uh okay. So installing watch parts, huh? You want me to put a watch together? Do it live on stream? Oh my gosh. Alright, so here's our center wheel. That drops right in here. I want to check. Okay. Let me get some oil on there. This is so weird because I'm pretty left-hand dominant with stuff like this. Um, I have to learn to use my tweezers with my right hand. And there we go. Um, does this have a... So you are separate. Don't mind me, it's just my first time putting this together. <laughs> I 
There it is. That's the part I was looking for. Okay. Oh, does this have that same gunk on it? Okay, I'm not even going to touch it to it. Let me grab. That's so weird. Uh, I don't know if that's an issue of something not drying properly. Or if something that was on the watch mixed with the cleaning solution. I, I'm, I'm assuming maybe it just didn't dry enough there. Okay, so that sticks out. Maybe a push through. So in theory, I could put this in now. In theory, I could install this. Let's see what happens. That was a good chunk of oil there. Oh, that button. Uh, gotta find all my like screws here. You came out of here, so maybe maybe I don't need to make this as tough as I think. <laughs> Now, I would love to have a fully functioning lathe. So, stuff like these screw heads, if you can see, they're, they're kind of scratched up on there. Here, let me zoom in on one. That guy there. You can see, that's not grease or anything, that's scratches in the screw head. Um, there we go. Uh, that's obviously another discipline uh, when it comes to doing watch work is uh, going through and refinishing everything make it nice and polished and perfect smooth that screw head over and then if you need to cut a little more into the channel do that too mirror finish polish not a skill I possess yet I do have a working lathe, but I don't have any of the, the collets for it. Those are what you put into it. Oops. You hold whatever part you're trying to work on. Uh, give me a second here. Uh, I have to go into... Great. <laughs> Muted. Oh, am I not logged in? Great. Uh, Alright, well, I guess I'll leave that for now. Be 
showing up anymore. A little turn there. There's like near zero friction there. It feels really, really nice. Okay. Let's get the gear train in, huh? Be going that way. Let's get them all out here. I know that you go over there. Uh, this I know. Oh yeah, you are. Hundred percent. That's my guy there. You go there, and then you fit underneath this one. Oops, now I'm getting fiddly with everything here. Yeah, Master's Week. This tiger is returned from uh, when he was in a car crash. He didn't do that well. <laughs> but he made the cut, and everyone was really excited to see him. So it was pretty cool. There we go. Now he's starting to get some. Oh, I had this in the wrong spot. This goes over here. It was cool seeing Tiger play. Uh, Scotty Scheffler won. Spoilers. I mean, he was kicking butt every day. Rory McIlroy did pretty good. He had a good day four. A good Sunday. Scotty Seffler's finish. Uh, he he four-putted. <laughs> uh, let's just say the nerves got to him. I mean, he was like two feet, two feet from victory. You lip, uh, well, I missed the first one, and it's like, okay, just you know, misread it or maybe push it or something. Well, he knocked it close, missed that putt. He's like, okay, center myself, focus, I got this. Lines up his putt, lips it out. <laughs> then he finally made it. And like the crowd was cheering him on, or like, dude, you won. Like you, you four putted, and you still won by like three shots. Pretty good stuff. And why are you not? Who's not? Who's not? Who's not happy in here? Excuse me. And a couple cheese, uh, pimento cheese sandwiches. Something I always heard about at Augusta. I decided I would try to make them myself. Not bad. Did I use the master's recipe? I have no idea. 
me. Oh, no. Okay, now you're out of here. Um, I have to be gentle here. I can't just try to crush this all together. Um... I mean, the ends of these pivots are thinner than the tweezers here. What's going on in there? Maybe if I look closer, maybe I can deduce something here. You're in your home, you're in your home. You are in your home. Wow, did you see that shift down? Oh, it was off camera a little bit. So this pivot was lined up. This one was lined up. And then as soon as I lined that one up, it dropped. Okay. Grab some screws for that. Which should be okay. Okay, okay. Again, I wish I had the ability to clean up these screw heads in a proficient manner, anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push on this end. It's all moving. And then while I'm holding this down, and I'm, I'm not crushing it, I'm just holding it down in place. Gosh. Well, I guess I just over tighten that. Again, the screwdriver is beryllium. So it it breaks and crumbles away before it damages the screw. Cause it is soft. It's not coming through the microphone too loud or anything. Even remotely close to nice. Yes, it is. Let's see how good that looks. That's uh, not quite perfectly flush, but that should should suffice for what I needed to. Okay. So now that all of those screws are installed, this is where the power comes from, over here. I should be able to apply force here and see this entire gear train move. Oh, let's do it out here. Now 
There we go. Gear train works. I'm going to go ahead and apply some lubrication now. Just a just a tap. <laughs> and then I gotta This is a different oil now for these two. I'm not putting that much force on this. Just a little touch and look, it's like, it's a, a floating. I do have to get lubrication on the other side, but I'm going to save that until I get over there. Winding. <laughs> it was... I was just looking at this one and I'm like, I already have the gear train installed. Why is there another one of these? <laughs> that is actually for the, um, the winding goes in here. Yeah. That's for winding the, the barrel. Pallet fork. Looking really clean. Like to see that. And again, I'm going to have to take this apart again. For a few different things. The epilon being one of them. Pivot poking through there. What you like to see? Thin this blade again. Just a hair. Whoops. Okay. And yes, I really do have to sharpen these screwdrivers that much. <laughs> Here's another way you can confirm that's working. Now, if I were to add the ratchet and the click on, power won't just immediately wind out. It actually will now be stopped by the pallet fork there. Funny how that works out, isn't it? Um, I 
Music's been playing for <laughs> over an hour. Okay. Sure. Guess I don't even know how audible that is. Oh well. Uh, right, so this had a pretty cool ratcheting system. Uh, there's a number of things going on here. All right. I do also have to install the second uh, pinion, the second hand pinion, or whatever you want to call that. I'm probably going to do that last. I'm going to get some parts out here on the table. On to the bench. We'll see what we got. That, that. Cover that back up. These are parts of the winding system here. Good to practice some tweezy control eh? So there's a spring. I always have springs upside down. You know my tweezers are flared out ever so slightly. So I'm not even going to actually install this end of the spring. I'm not going to put it under tension. upside down. Oh my goodness. That looks a lot better. Okay. Shinier too. Is there another? Mm, nope, that doesn't seem right. You're probably for there. second here while I look through my screws. One of those.
this screw looked suspicious in the tray that it was in. I have a feeling it might be this one. Nope, that's way too wide. Go back to this tray. Actually, you know what? I, yeah, okay, no, I was just doing this wrong. When I said, oh wow, that's got two screws, I lied. screws is that guy right there I knew it had to be a shorter screw because the bottom of the the hole that the click sits in there is the barrel so if it was too long it would literally scratch a ring around this barrel so now now i can go in here and put this spring under tension Perfect. Again, this has a really neat system here. Uh, first, not line up for me. There we go. So the click is engaged with the outer part of this ratchet wheel. And again, this is a really neat system here. Um, on the back side of, it's like a two-parter. A little gear there, and I don't know if I'm supposed to lubricate that or not, so I'm not going to. That just sits on the top of that nicely. Perfect. Well, so far it kind of seems like I know what I'm doing. This freely turns this way, but it locks in this way. You can see the screw turning on the top there too. An interesting way to ratchet all of that. It goes, goes there. And if you were here when I took this apart, the, uh, all that rust or old grease or whatever it was, that's all gone. So, that's nice to see.
Now I could put some of the red. I forget what it's, the number is. 9104. <laughs> Again, I know which one is which. I just don't have all the numbers and everything memorized. Take a little bit of this blue stuff here. This is a grease. And seated nicely there. And unless I'm mistaken, ah, okay. So now, this can freely spin this way, so when the stem is engaged, you're not going to wind it backwards, but then as soon as you turn it the right way, now it's winding up. Now there is some power in that spring, there's some tension in that spring, and that should all take right off. Look at that. So, that's where I'm going to leave this side for now. I've been going for an hour already. Wow. Well, if you're watching this live or the rebroadcast or just the video after the fact, hope you're doing well. Okay. First thing I want to look at. Oh, okay. Let's do, let's do some stuff. Okay. Let's grab. Okay. Of that guy, of this guy. Okay. We're gonna install the keyless works here. Again, I'm gonna have to get a closer look at this. Is that? Any change at all? Nope. Weird. <laughs> I'll be popping that in there, but I have to get some, some wheels on here first. If we need to get the wheels on, I gotta put some grease on them. I'll do it up here so I don't have to adjust the camera again.
Okay, perfect. So. Actually, I, t I don't even need the, the stem to do this. <laughs> I forgot I have the, the other end already together. There we go. I get that grease spread around just a little bit. The winding feature works, so that's nice, that's handy. date function complication if you want to call it that on the the watch here strictly time so was a little more of that blue grease Nothing to it. And then this piece here, this is the setting lever, and this is what's going to tell the watch what needs to move where to make things work. Whoops. Freebie there, a little little oil for everybody. A lot of spots to lubricate on a watch. Am I the best at it? Well, probably not. Again, not formally trained, don't have the knowledge and theory and principle of it all down. I'll just put that aside for now. But hey, you can always learn and adapt and update how I do what I do. And that's always exciting. A little bit of sauce right there. And then I can take some radical here and wipe off the top there. Plenty in between there. Perfect. 
this dictates what to go where. And then this does it. <laughs> In position or out position. And there's no date function again on here, so. It's either winding or it's setting the time. That's the two options for this setup. Looking good, looking good. A little spring here. Ah, yes. shorter end in first oh these are always tricky gosh. No, well, let's put the long end in first. That's not in. goodness let's free that spring Grab some stiffer tweezers here. This is being a no, maybe not those. Whoops, there we go. Why aren't you sitting in there nicely? Maybe if I just push just on the spring right here. That is seated. Thank you, other tweezers. The tricky part, but you gotta keep your head on the task. And, uh, yeah. 
it does take a little bit of effort there. I have to get those installed. Line this up. I'm not going to line up this end yet. This hand now does not move uh, until I get a screw in here. Okay. Now I can take this plexi stick here. After I take some more blue. Perfect. Take the plexi stick and we're just gonna bump that back into place there. Is there a time setting? Hey, how's it going, Enoch? You have the battery changed? Nice. Heck yeah. And this is a little bit tighter than I would like. And I'm going to assume it's because I don't have this spring in yet. I just put stuff over there. I did. Okay. This guy here. Oops. That in there the right way? Teeny tiny screw. I really should have put the hairspring in its own little tray, but well, it's in its own tray now, so. Teeny tiny. Teeny tiny screws. Actually, that screwdriver is a little bit small for that. Yeah, looking forward to the class tomorrow. Uh, again, more or less, I should know most of what's being covered, but I learned, there we go, that feels a lot better now. I learned at least one thing in the last course, uh, even if it was something kind of minor, but still it counts. It still seems a little harsh, but that's okay. Works perfectly again. Nice. Always good to hear. Again, I can clean up some of this extra blue up here. And then it's just left what's uh, in the in the tracks there in the in the channels. A little groove spot came up without even. Yep, yeah, you, you shouldn't have to hit it too, too, too hard. Uh, I, I, I imagine that one wasn't too bad. Uh, so we can put the cannon pinion on now. It's going to be forced fit right over the center wheel there. Cannon pinion looks like this. Heck yeah, and I do see a nice indent on the side there, so this should snap in and hold pretty well. If 
that's snapped in really well and it's it's a perfect indentation it's snapped on nice and tight but this still moves freely if that indentation was too tight it would grasp the center wheel oh you, you can't see there's a thing in the way it grasps the center wheel here and it would just be friction and you're going to wear out metal on metal because you don't lubricate inside there so then you have to get your smoothing brooches which i don't have here so luckily this is nice and smooth very easy to work so it's going to be a nice to set the time and who knows maybe this watch is old enough and it hasn't been serviced uh, before me that maybe it just wore itself to this <laughs> I guess I didn't see a lot of dust when I took it open so uh, I do have to get some blue blue lube in here I did the red already actually pretty full over there so okay dial side's done uh, there is one more wheel to put on there but it, it doesn't get secured in any way so we're just gonna leave that as is go back over here again and as you can see, when I turn it this way, it doesn't do anything, but as it goes this way, now it's winding uh, the hole. And you can see the click engaging down here. When you wind a watch and you hear it click, 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 that's actually what you're hearing and or feeling, is the click. Alright. Set that aside for now. See how I do it this today, huh? So I need to loosen this screw here, and that's still open, so I should just be able to flip this over and install it. Sure, yeah. Now that it's fixed, you're able to use it with your custom suit. Oh my gosh. Well, heck yeah. Oh gosh, uh, let me, let me really get in there, huh? I just want to make sure I'm not hitting that hairspring. There we go. Oh, I had it slotted for a second there. So you can see how tiny this screw is. Now imagine I unscrewed it all the way and it came out. I would have to re-slot it. There we go. I have a system. I had a system. Oh, shaky hand. <laughs> All right. That is open now. 
It's like a piece of something in there. And whatever that was, get that out of there. Oh yeah, no worries, I'm glad I can help. And you got the watch working, that's always handy. A few things going on here, I gotta zoom back in again. That's in place there. Most importantly, there we go. That regul those those uh, regulating pins are very 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 snug. Close that up. Oh, just knocked it completely off the screen. <laughs> so I closed it up there. So now, uh, so now the the hairspring can't come out. So now I can tighten up the stud spring there for the balance. And this thing's ready to be installed. You rudely awoken from sleeping. <laughs> Oh, that will happen. One of this. I was up until midnight watching uh, Formula One with my buddy. I don't even like Formula One. I'll watch it and cheer along and, you know, give my completely professional uh, analytics, I guess. Okay, that's just loosely tightened for now. I'm not gonna try to fiddle with that too much. So this is this is the this is the big this is the big fun one. Oh, I nailed the focus. Look at that. So this should have a nice wind on it. And it's an automatic, so you cannot overwind it. Um. For you to overwind a watch, like a mechanical, hold on, you would have to fully wind it tight where it doesn't turn anymore and then go past that. And if you do that, you'll actually just break stuff, so. Okay, I thought I felt a slip. And it doesn't feel like it's getting too much tighter. I mean, like, that's wound. It doesn't feel like it's getting too much tighter. So maybe I've got an okay amount of Kluber or a little light on it. Um, when you get a lot on there, it really, ugh, it really grips. Uh, so this is kind of the big, this is the big payoff right here. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Okay. Okay, you want to go here. Okay. Again, this is my first time assembling this particular movement. But I'm able to kind of deduce where things properly sit. 
Okay. Close here. <laughs> I'm gonna lift this up and turn it just a little bit. There we go. Excuse me. Okay. I'm taking maybe that screw. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this screw. Okay. Just mathing out which screw goes away. That screw does not fit there. <laughs> Couple reasons that dropped in immediately, and as you can see, it sticks through the plate right, right there. So that is not the right screw. Right, 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 right. Okay, nope. That's those screws are fine. It's gonna be one of these then. Let's try this guy right here. Wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know it? No. This one. Oh, that, yep, that's it. That's the one. I'm not looking too closely at those screws and I had three and two were a pair and one was the, the odd man out. And I grabbed one of the pair instead of the odd man out. As you can see, that just perfectly goes in. And this thing's humming nicely along. I didn't get the grease on the pallet stones there. But I do just uh, confirm that that is working. Taking off. Hey, thanks for stopping in. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Night. <laughs> enjoy the rest of your night. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, 8 o'clock. Wow. Well, I'm going to leave the pallet stones for now. Uh, I want to get this wrapped up soon. Again, like I said, I'm going to have to take this apart anyway to work on it some more. This is the fun part. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. And if I recall, I don't like doing this on this mat because this mat is a bit too squishy, but we'll we'll see how it works out. See how this works out. Oh 
boy. That could have been bad. Now people do epilom these too. Uh, that's just nothing I've gotten into a habit of yet. That will probably... I, I obviously, I keep evolving and updating and improving my work. So I'm sure that will be in a, a, an upcoming... <laughs> extension of what I do. We'll say it like that. Again, my left hand is kind of the dominant tweezering hand, tweezing hand. But when I need to hold my hand perfectly steady, with like the right amount of grip and stuff, that's uh, the right one's pretty good at it. Can see that? Okay. That is a nice oiled cap jewel there. Close that cover. And this is the shock spring here. This is what, uh, whoops. This is what does all the fun stuff. Should this take a bump, this spring is meant to, you know, kind of reshape and, and accept a bit of a bump there. So, yeah, those are floating jewels there. So, and then I can also go back in and tighten the balance stud screw here. Doesn't need much. And that is a teeny tiny screw. <laughs> the automatic feature, I think I'm gonna leave off for tonight. And then getting the second hand pinion in. Oh boy. Oh boy. Again, this is a shock spring here. Anchored here, and then this. Interesting. That's an interesting design there. Well, let's see what we got. Eli, welcome in. Such good production quality for such little viewers. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I, uh... 
Oh, maybe I don't advertise the stream enough. Oh boy. Remember what I was talking about? Stuff sticking through the dial there? Those are the wrong screws right there. And I know which two those are. Those are the, that's the balance, or I'm sorry, the uh, gear train bridge. Oh boy, that is a good catch there. Okay. Uh, screwdriver with this one. Oh, I, before I unscrew that fully, I should... S okay, so that spring is not going to spring on me. thing is a neat there we go you can just see it flopping around there Yeah, I do have some screws in the wrong place on the uh, for the bridges there, so I'm gonna get those moved around. And I, I, yeah, I got it. <laughs> so what happens when you take a watch apart and then don't touch it for a week? You forget exactly which screws where. And a better organizing system would also help. Take this. All that cleaned up. Gotta remember to breathe too. <laughs> Okay. What is that little purple piece? Uh, this right here? <laughs> Are you talking about... Uh, whoa, Runky. Are you talking about this little purple piece right here? <laughs> uh, so that's called a jewel. Um, this in particular is a cap jewel. We're going to put some oil on it. Uh, and this is lubrication for the balance wheel.
We're going to make this a nice little circle there. First, by me trying to round this out and make it a circle, I'm just making it worse. <laughs> So these are jewels. Uh, they used to be rubies. These are synthetic. Basically, these are used instead of just metal bushings or anything uh, to reduce the friction and uh, the hardness of them. They don't wear out. They don't wear out easily, that is. It's a two-piece part. Now there's the cap jewel, and then there's the inside part, and then those are both loose, and they're just held in here by a spring, which, let me just get nice and nice there for you. Those are floating. Uh, this is the suspension. This is like, oh, <laughs> I send the spring flying. And send it again. So the spring holds it in place. And then if the watch takes a bump, it moves a little bit instead of snapping uh, the shaft, the pinion, on the balance. There we go, and that's a reinstall. Uh, so there's one. I think this watch has 20, maybe it says it on here. Let's see. Uh, does it say how many jewels? There's, I, I, I want to assume there's 20 something. 21 jewels probably. So you can see, they're all over. Even some way down in there. But that is up and running. Now, obviously, I don't know how well it's running because I don't have a time grapher at home yet which is on my shopping list to get. And then I'll be able to actually test um, if um, how well it's working. So I can actually check and prove my work. Um, and diagnose. If it isn't running well, I can try to use that to diagnose. Um, is it magnetized? Is... One of the pallet stones messed up or greased wrong. Um, beat error, stuff like that. Amplitude. There's a whole bunch of things you can check with the time grapher. Uh, so I have to get one set up. And I'll have to find a home for it first on my bench. And then uh, get that all sorted out. <laughs> but I think... That will probably do it for me tonight. Two hours. And that's all assembled. I do like the way that the light dances, especially on the edge. Right around here. Now, that's nothing anybody's going to see when you're wearing a watch, but for the people that work on them, Stuff like that's really cool to see. <laughs> I 
This is doing nothing. Now it's winding. Again, I really like that system. It's a little different. I mean, the uh, piece on the dial side there. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to change some screws around. That was... Gotcha. Okay. How do you... There's more parts that go in here, so I'm not going to screw this in or anything. This is a shorter screw here, so this won't stick through the uh, through the plate. Did I build this entirely? Uh, I, I assembled it. I guess I didn't make this. Uh, the term watchmaker is a little confusing. Um, this was completely disassembled uh, by me last week. So if you want to see me take it apart, you definitely can. Um, disassembled, cleaned, reassembled, lubricated. There we go. So now those two screws are no longer sticking through the dial side there. Isn't that neat? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Assembled, okay, yeah. Just just making sure. Like people will hear like, oh, you're a watchmaker. Oh, can you can you make me a watch? Can you build me a watch? And it's like, no, no I can't. <laughs> that is an entirely different thing. On my card at work, I actually have just expert watch repair. Uh... Partially because I, I didn't want to confuse people or give them ideas. Um, and also, of course, I'm always still learning. Uh, and there is stuff that I can't do yet, and I'm not certified, so... Certification is quite a bit of work. <laughs> okay. You know, I said I was going to be done, but I want to... Let's get this in here before I forget what's all where. I know it looks like I just did nothing, but I definitely did something. I promise. So that is what the second hand will attach to.
There's just a little cover here. It's there. I just want a little touch. On the top there. The fiddliest, tiniest little screws. <laughs> no, no, this is. Seems like that's my guy there. There we go, and I just over tighten that a little bit again, so now I have to resharpen the screwdriver again. Again, again, again. Uh, yeah, so that is a running movement there. An Omega. It is up and running. So I'll have to do the automatic uh, complication there. Get those pieces put back together. Get that slapped on there. Put the weight that guy there, and then button it up. This also has broken dial feet, so I'm going to see what I can do about that. Uh, I don't have a, like a soldering tool for that or anything, or welding, whatever you want to call it there. I think it's just like copper soldering, but that's nothing that I have, so I will have to figure out something for that. I don't, excuse me, I don't want to just put dial dots. There is plenty of space up here where I could just put stickers. They're called dial dots. It's like a little piece of adhesive, like a double-sided adhesive. And I could just put one there. And then this one's not even in the watch, so. But I'd like to do a, a, a nice job with it, whatever I decide to do, so. I am really excited with how well that turns. I like that. Uh, but yeah, two hours. That's going to do it for me. That's. I think this... I think this uh, music playlist just stopped. <laughs> so that is going to do it for me. TRSCP. You can find me on Twitch and YouTube. YouTube is the spot to be, though. Uh, I do want to get some memberships going on the YouTube channel uh, for this and also for the other things that I do. I think it's about time. Um, yeah, this has been put in together in Omega. The, the special one to work on. Uh, based on who it's for. I think he's going to be really stoked once it's all finished. Uh, yeah, but that's going to do it for me tonight. Hopefully you did enjoy the stream. Or if you're watching this video after the fact, I hope you enjoyed as well. Subscribe. <laughs> Leave some comments and all that stuff. Have a good night. Thanks. Nice build. Thank you. Uh, glad you like it. Uh, yeah. Pretty fun to watch. It's an Omega. Those are always fun to work on. So Everything fits together well. Maybe someday I'll do a Rolex on the stream. Uh, but yeah, I always try to learn something when I'm doing these streams, and hopefully you did too. And that's really all I got. I don't have an outro or anything, so thanks again. You guys enjoy the rest of your night or day or whenever you're seeing this. Thank you.